Welcome back to Truth Seekers, along with Coach Nick and myself, Coach Josh. We have Carl joining us today on our topic of sales. So a lot of our discussions so far over the first few weeks are could be considered below the waterline. Uh, this one, I would argue, is above the waterline sales. So uh, Carl, I'll just, say, I'll just ask a question. Um, sales, what does sales mean to you? Let's start with that. Uh, well, um, every, everybody's in it in one form or another. Um, sales is indeed a profession. It, it's not a verb so much. I mean, people say go sell, but, but sales really is a profession. And uh, just like any other profession, it should be studied. Uh, you, ought to, you ought to understand what makes it work and what, make, what causes it to have problems. Uh, sales is about casting influence. Um, you sell to your spouse, you sell to your kids, you sell to your neighbor, uh, you sell to the, the prospect, you sell to the customer, you sell to your boss, you sell to your coworkers. I mean, it uh, really is just the ability to effectively cast influence and, and, to, and to win people over to your way of thinking. Um, really good salespeople are, are know how to do that. And, uh, and by and large, the ones that are really good have spent a lot of time studying the art of uh, the profession. Sales can sometimes have a negative connotation around it, um, mm -hmm. people being sold to. So how, how do you approach that subject? You know, it wasn't, it wasn't the sales professional that asked for that to be the case. Um, <laughs> you know, it is, uh, you know, I think that the reason why sales has a negative stigma is because uh, there is no barrier to entry into the profession. Oh, okay? yeah. uh, I mean, you don't even have to graduate from high school. And uh, as long as you fog a mirror, make calls, set appointments and sell stuff, people will hire you. And then they'll pay a lot of money on top of that. I'm not kidding. Uh, in fact, sales uh, that requires almost no education happens to be the number one compensated profession on the planet, <laughs> which I think is kind of funny, actually. Because um, if you look at some of the you know, the entrepreneurs that have built billion dollar businesses. I mean, they are salespeople. Yeah. That's, that's uh, the, their income goes to the credit of the sales profession. But you know what? Think about the doctor though. Think about the family doctor. We, we don't have a bad stigma about the family doctor, right? I mean, why is that? I mean, I, I haven't seen my doctor in three years. I'll sit down with him and he'll start asking me personal questions and I'm not gaming him at all. I'm telling him the blank truth, transparent. But you put a sales guy in my office trying to sell me something, I ain't giving him the truth, right? Well, and again, I, I, I think the reason why is that because there's so many what I'll call bad salespeople in the business that, that truly really are after maybe making a commission or just getting the sale. They're really not interested in helping the, the, the customer. There's a lot of them out there. And the problem is prospects don't know what kind of a salesperson they're dealing with, one that cares about them or one that's just in for the sale. And so they have to be defensive and, and they have to, you know, play the game so that they don't get uh, perhaps taken. And, and I, I think that's why the stigma is what it is. Um, if you truly treat sales as a profession and understand that it's not about us, but it really is about the customer and that we need to care about him first before anything that we have to sell, then it's amazing how prospects will begin to treat you like a family doctor. Uh, if you look at the vision of our company, the, the vision is to make sales the honorable profession. Um, so we just need to train people up. We just need to help them understand what sales really is. Uh, and then I think that perception will change. So I, I know it struck a nerve with, with uh, Nick. So I'll just slide in a quick comment here because I know he's going to, he's, he's got stuff to say about that. But I, I just so appreciate what you said about um, doing it for the right reason, I guess, is, is my takeaway. Uh, if, if you're doing it to make money, uh, you might be able to make it, but if you're doing it to deliver something for somebody or make somebody's life better, yeah. that's, that's a true quote unquote, uh, like relationship, uh, an alignment versus, yeah. a, you know, what most people would consider a sale. Go ahead, Nick. Which, how did you know? What, what, what did you see me do? I just, we've been doing this a little bit. I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just love, uh, uh, Carl, your your description of uh, of thinking about that. There's there's no barrier to entry when you start. Absolutely, and it makes complete sense. And but what was also interesting uh, thinking about my my long corporate career as well is that working in banking, a lot of people work in that 
because because of the money that they want to they think they can make and so there's a lot of of people there that really shouldn't be as well and and uh, for and, and so that, that there's a lot of frustration there because of people that actually want to do well and do the right thing surrounded by people that are just looking for the paycheck yeah and, and so, so so it's interesting to see those that dynamic in the different areas and play out in a different way because because sales is so broad or can be so broad think of people think of it in that way as well and tend to think to the negative which is really the human condition and so yeah i think it's honorable for sure to, to make it in the honorable profession because everything is sales everything is sales or yeah. as you say it's it's casting influence absolutely i love the way you put that yeah influence you know, I, I might uh, i might expand on that a little bit you know i uh you know, some of these salespeople will begin to, to make a career out of sales, but they still don't get trained. Um, and they still, they just still try to do it on product knowledge and industry application and, and just, Hey, I'm the smartest guy on the street. So you should buy from me. And, uh, and, and that still doesn't really honor the profession because yeah. at the end of the day, sales is not about product. Right. Sales is not about, you know, uh, the, the label on the side of a box that somebody might buy. Sales is about people. Sales is about uh, creating a certain emotional experience that, that, that people are looking for when they're trying to get a solution to something. Yeah. I, I, I have completely flipped my whole idea of sales. I, I think sales is the best career on the planet. Um, I think salespeople are the frontline uh, worker that drive economy. Um, nothing happens in business until somebody sells something. <laughs> Yep. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, here we are in, a, in what I'll call an economic challenging time. It is the sales professional that's going to have to go out there uh, against a lot of heat, against a lot of fire, against a lot of rejection and pain. And they got, they got to get things moving again. I mean, it is the sales professional that is so needed. I mean, you want to talk about an important um, uh, career to, to this country, uh, to... <laughs> To, uh, to the economy, um, I mean, uh, uh, we, we need good salespeople. And I think there's a huge shortage of it because we don't really vet. Uh, and, uh, and because there's the people really don't get trained, trained on it. And, and it's, it, it's, I think they kind of get into it the way I did, which is you, you get a vertical education. Mine was in engineering. And then you find yourself in a selling seat. And, and again, you think you just go out and tell people about what you, what you know. And, just doesn't work really well that way. And so, uh, so there, is, uh, there is a methodology. Uh, there is, it is a science. Why aren't people studying this? If they want to have success in sales, they should be studying it. And they, and they by and large, do not. Yeah, that's, I appreciate you sharing all that. that a, lot, a lot of that resonates with me. I think uh, so many companies, even people, salespeople right now, are, uh, make excuses for a lack of sales when, like, you know, this is a time right now where there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of people suffering. So I want to, I want to pay homage to that, but there's, there's a lot of opportunity to solve a lot of problems for people. And that's what sales means to me is, is you're solving a problem or improving somebody's life in a certain way. And that could be for anything. We, we don't have to go down the rabbit hole with that. Yeah. Uh, so I just, I just so appreciate the, uh, the outlook that, uh, you know, there's a lot of, there's potential out there right now to solve problems. I'm wondering, um, Carl, if we can phrase that in a way with uh, like, so I'm wondering about Sandler because a lot of people know about Sandler. Is there, what's something unique about Sandler that somebody wouldn't know about the sales process? Hmm. Well, okay. Yeah, it's an excellent, excellent question. Um, you know, uh, I, I think one of the, the stigmas that, that makes sales and salespeople kind of challenged why the why the conversations are somewhat gained is because when the prospect and the salesperson tend to come together uh, there you got conflicting agendas you, you have a you have a salesperson that's trying to hit a quota trying to earn an income for his family and he's trying to make a sale so yes he wants to hear yes and he, he it's very comfortable for him uh, in fact no is just the opposite to a sales professional no is is a failure it's loss of hope um, it means it's over. And so it's amazing how they'll, they'll steer away from that. Now, now think about the prospect's emotional agenda. You know, for a prospect to say yes to a solution, that's risky. You see, that's just why people go through buyer's remorse all the time, right? They make a purchase and then they wonder, did I do the right thing? 
And uh, so, so you, you got the prospect who's nervous about saying yes, but he's very comfortable saying no, because no means no risk, no movement. You're able to stay where you are and, and maybe another day we'll, we'll decide to do something, but, but there's no risk in it. And so they're very comfortable with no. So you take that agenda and you cast it against the agenda of the salesperson and they're opposite of each other. And so basically you have, you have a fight right out of the gate. <laughs> and so what Sandler does is we say, look, Mr. Sales Professional, align your agenda with the prospects. Be negative about your own product. Don't, don't sell it. In fact, talk against it. Uh, tell people that, yeah, you know, there's nothing great about what we have. It's, you, you could get what we have anywhere else. Don't pitch, don't sell, just be very, uh, no's are wonderful. No's are great in a sales conversation. In fact, no's create safety. No's create, give this impression of control to the prospect. No's create a feeling of comfort. There is no threat with no. So uh, one of the big uh, mindset shifts that we train our clients here at Sandler is that no is a good answer. No's make money. If you want to get a prospect to yes, you first have to get them to say no. And I know that sounds so contrarian. It sounds so backwards. But to be honest with you, that's one of the big reasons that attracted me to Sandler. Because Sandler salespeople do not look like the typical salesperson. And guess what? The typical salesperson, yes, treated like a salesperson. But uh, you just flip it go 180 degrees, 180 degrees out of phase with that, which is kind of what Sandler is. And then people will see you differently and treat you differently. So um, that, that's just one of uh, a whole litany of, of, uh, of, of differences and philosophies that, uh, that we have at Sandler. What, and thank you so much. That's cool. What, if, what could we relate to? Like, what is the thing? Because, because of course it's back to that cast and influence, which we're doing all the time. All of us are doing all the time. Uh, whether we're conscious of it, of it or not, what's the thing that we could refer that you could talk about that, that is within the process that should be that, that creates that 180 flip that people would resonate with that they do themselves, that they could see in themselves, that we could practice to not only help in this, in this noble um, profession, but also for us in everyday life. Well, I, I, first of all, I, I think you got to recognize that, that again, it's, it's about the customer. It's about the person you're trying to cast influence. It's not about our idea. It's not about our solution. It's not about our product. It's about uh, really understanding why is the customer hurting? Why does the customer need a solution to begin with? And understanding what they need from their perspective. I think the traditional salesperson, they, they think their products are so great that they think that the product itself will certainly fix whatever problem you have. But that is so not, not the case. It is the prospect that has the issue. It is the prospect that has the problem. And, uh, and, and so, um, and oftentimes, you know, prospects don't help because they'll say, well, how can you, how can you help me? And instead of going off and saying how you can help them, you say, you know, I'm not sure I can. Um, I, do, I don't think I know enough to really to, to appreciate uh, what, what, to what extent I could bring value here. So could I ask you more questions and, and let you tell me your story? I am a firm believer that every prospect out there knows how to sell themselves. The problem with the salespeople out there is we never give the prospect a chance to do it. <laughs> we always have the talk track, right? That says, well, this is what you should buy. But uh, it's the prospect that really needs to tell the story, not the salesperson. And that is so contrarian again. Um, and so every time they want me to get to dump my stuff, I go negative. I said, look, there's nothing special. Well, why, why is Sandler so great? I says, you know, it really isn't. Heck, you, you could buy 10 other selling systems out there and they're all fantastic. There's nothing special about Sandler. What's, what needs to be understood is what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah, perhaps there's alignment. If, if I know what you're trying to accomplish and, and you know what Sandler does, maybe there's alignment there. But until you tell me your story, I got, nothing to, I got nothing to give. I tell you what, that is such a transformational sales conversation that prospects are not used to having yeah. that, uh, that then all of a sudden, once they begin to really share what it is they need and what's really at stake, they begin to see that the salesperson's solution is the only one on the market because they begin to get emotionally connected. And uh, pain, which people register at an emotional level, is not a commodity. Pain is unique. 
Mm. And if a prospect believes that a salesperson understands their pain at an emotional level, the prospect will see their product as unique and therefore they'll pay margin to have it. So, um, I mean, it, it, uh, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know if that really answers your, your, your question, Nick, but, uh, um, it is, uh, uh that really is a, a big takeaway for your, for your listeners is to, to, to let the, let the prospect tell their story, not the salesperson to, to, to give the pitch. Yeah, absolutely. And so if, so I, if I can play that through my thought place, the process, if I may Carl and, and coach, because uh, you talked about influencing your spouse, influencing your kids, people, everyone around you, it's the same thing. It's just, what is it that you want? That I can help you with like, not, not, or what do you, what do you need or what's out there? Just tell me more about it. Like, I, yeah. I'm not going to pretend that I can fix it. I'm not going to pretend I've got the answers. Just share, you know, let, let me hear you and let me align with you. And, and build the connection that way regardless, right? And it's not about the result anyway, because you're just building more and more connection, more and more influence, and more and more emotional ties, which ultimately is, makes people feel good anyway. So, I, so I, that's what I took from that, because I think that's the application that we can all use whatever it is we're doing. You know, the magic to that is, is that if you, um, if we're not pushing a solution, if we're really listening and try to get understanding, it's amazing how the, the prospect whether it be a, again, a customer yeah. um, or a family member, they start selling the salesperson on why the salesperson says what they have. And I tell you what, that's a good position to be in because uh, in truth, you can't convince anybody to buy what you have. They have to discover it for themselves. And that's, that's a professional process. It's a professional process. I, I just so appreciate your perspective, Carl, that uh, pain is unique. I wrote that down. So, I mean, my takeaway from all of what you said is that it's all about the people. It's all about connecting with people, uh, which is interesting about um, one of the products that we have at Pro Advisor Coach is the Mind Scan Assessment. And basically what Dar Dr. Hartman discovered um, during his study of formal axiology, which is a mathematical measurement of our value systems, is that much like there are three primary colors that all colors are derived from, there's three primary sections of thought that all of our thoughts can be divided into. And he called it relator, doer, thinker. So relator dealing with people is one of the main categories that all of our thoughts can be categorized into. So be, to be able to effectively connect with people, I think disarms that, that sleazy salesman like mentality. And it just shows you that you're connecting with another person because um, we're all humans. We're all human beings. We all have unique backgrounds. And oftentimes when you're coming together with a prospect, there are, take me for example, 32 years, 40 years, 45 years of experience behind these unique individual people that the other person doesn't know about. And you can only get to that by a conversation and talking to and, and, and disarming yourself to creating a space to where you can share your, your pain and see what the solution is. So I, I just, I wanted to throw that in there. I appreciate what you said about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, first things first, right? It's, it's get rapport, understand, listen. Uh, well, take... and, and so, so you mentioned rapport and, and uh, again, you know, sales is not the study of product or application. It's the study of people. Uh, people who really are high level sailor trainer are, are trained professionals. They, they can go to work for any company tomorrow right. and sell their product no matter what it is yep. that very same day because it's not about the product, you see. You don't need product expertise to sell. What you need to do is you need emotional intelligence and you gotta be able to listen and you gotta be able to, to really let the customer tell their story and, and create an environment where it's safe for them to do that. And uh, there's so much science that's out there. Um, one thing I love about Sandler is that, is that a lot of what we train is just scientifically based. Yeah. I mean, and what I love about science is that we use science to predict the future. You know, we know that when you throw a baseball at a certain angle and a certain speed, you, you can predict where it's going to land because we understand the science of uh, mass acceleration and gravity. You know what I'm saying? Well, sales is the same thing. If you understand the science of human behavior, if you understand that people behave emotionally and, 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 and they're very predictable in their, and, and how they behave based on that. And there's plenty of data that we can leverage. Well, you know, you can you can really prepare your sales calls 
to, to take all that into account and then have very productive conversations uh, every time you're with a, a prospect. Uh, establishing rapport is, is, is one of those areas. How do, how, do you, how do you build it? People think you have to build relationships over days, weeks, months, years. I'm going to tell you what, you can build rapport in an instant. If you just understand what's attractive to the human being, and it's not a secret, it's public domain. <laughs> right. But salespeople refuse to study that stuff. So we, we, get the, we get the typical salesperson. At Sandler, we train them. I think the, the honorable and noble part of that process is that you're genuinely solving a, the problem that they have. You're, you're really getting, digging in deep and that's where the honorable uh, part comes in. So, yeah. It's a profession. Yeah. I mean, I think, you should, I think people should get a bachelor's degree in sales. I think they should get their master's. I think they should get a PhD in sales. Yeah. It's not a verb, it is a profession. I thought of, uh, you said the study of sales at one point, like the word salesology. Is that a word? We should make that a word. Yeah, study. maybe I'll make it a word. We'll just call it Sandler. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's start to grab some takeaways here. Coach Nick, talk to me here. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff. I made a few notes myself. Um, uh, yeah, the concept around no risk and uh, the buyer's remorse that we talked about. Um, aligning our agenda with the, the prospects. Give me, give me something that you think is unique to this conversation because so many people already have stigma around sales. What, how can we create value for the group here? Sales is a study of people. And you said, Carl, I love that. That really, that really resonates with me. I think that's, that's it. It's uh, casting the influence. I love that, the way that you put that. And it's, it's, it's a profession, not a verb for sure. Those, those things, are, I think, are the sound bites that we can continue to allow to have resonance as, over as much people as possible because it's really important yeah. to get that out there i think let's let's expand on that the sales as a profession a little bit yeah. I mean, just compare it to the other professions that that we see in the workplace i mean if i want to be a teacher not only do i have to have a certificate a, a, a certification the, the proof that i've been trained to be a teacher but then i have to have ongoing education I and mean, i can't just stop i have to continuously yeah. learn and grow if I want to be a professional engineer, not only do I have to get a degree, but then I have to be an understudy for a number of years. And then I have to take a test that proves that I know what I'm doing. And then ongoing training, 40 hours every year. So when we say sales is a profession, same thing, you know, no more, no more, non, no more, uh, you know, zero barrier to entry. I, I believe that, that people should be trained and then the training should be ongoing. It should never end. If yeah. this is a profession, you should always be working to get better. And I'll tell you one thing about getting better. It's not about learning new things. It's about constantly being reminded of the things that we're already supposed to know. And so, it, yeah. so that's why we're always reinforcing our clients. Do, this, is not a, this is not a seminar. This is a journey. Yeah. And clients will be with us for, for years, Nick. Years. Um, as they continuously uh, sharpen and, and, uh, and, and get better at the trade. Yeah, there's, there's no finish line. You know, Repetition is the mother of skill, absolutely. And, and uh, in, in, in what we do in coaching, uh, for me, that what really jumps out in the way I think about it is that if, if we're doing, in the, doing it in the right way and sales and the honorable profession that is, is to really help people get it, what is it, whatever it is that they need, it's exactly the same thing in coaching. The only difference that I really see, a coach, I'd love to get your thoughts on this, and certainly you, uh, Carl, is that the only difference between coaching and sales is whether we've decided to enter a formal relationship or not, or is it the pre part of that, or is it we part of that formal relationship? Because it's essentially mm -hmm. the same thing. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you need right now? What are you prepared to do to get that? Tell me what you want. Right? How, are you sure about that? How precise are you about that? And it's all of those same type of questioning. It's just, it's the same thing. It's just diving and allowing people to see what it is they want and yeah. and our and our commitment to allowing people to do that is a continuous process of learning and sharpening the saw and that's so so cool about what we do here at pro advisor coach because we're in i mean what we're doing right now carl is, is doing that you know we're doing that right now we're sharpening the saw and, and and so i think it's so important to continue it just never goes away i have a client this morning who's a high level financial advisor guy and coaches a lot of people in his company himself I said something to him. He's like, yeah, I know that. I tell people that all the time. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And that's why this is so important because I'm probably nothing we talk about is stuff that you don't know. It's the application of doing that. It's the constant right. reminder of doing that. Right. That's how we move forward and continue to grow. So thank okay. you very much for, for time. Mm -hmm. that's the other 
Absolutely. You know, maybe another uh, good takeaway, you know, we say people have to recognize that sales is, is a performance. Um, mm -hmm. Every time you sit in front of a prospect, the, the curtain goes up. And I find it silly that uh, when the curtain goes up, uh, first of all, the, the salesperson doesn't have any sheet music. And even what they do have, they never practice. Um, and role play is a curse word in most uh, sales offices. Who wants to, who wants to do that? It's torture. Um, so at Sandler, we, we write the sheet music. Yeah. And then they just keep playing the same music over and over and over again. You know, you get pretty good at it. You get pretty good at it. And of course, isn't that exactly what you do when you go to Broadway? You're not seeing a different show every time when you go see Lion King. You see the same show every time. But man, every time you watch it, it is amazing. Yeah. And it's all scripted. <laughs> the whole thing. So salespeople need to find their script. They need to, they need to study it, um, uh, modify it, optimize it, uh, learn it. And then when the curtain goes up, perform it in such a way that the prospect believes they're on Broadway. And that's professional selling. I'm so glad you said that. Just to wrap up, that was uh, the content that was just recently released about identity. You know, that, that even if it's genuine, we are actors. We're all actors. And we just mm -hmm. have to make sure we're acting in the right play. So. And motivated, right? Motivated yeah. by the right outcomes, which is uh, other-centered, client-centered. We want to make sure the prospect gets truly what they need, which may not be what we have. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome, guys. Appreciate it. Anything else to add before we wrap up here? It's great. Appreciate you great. coming on, Carl. Thank Thanks you very much. Hey, appreciate you having me, gentlemen. This has been fun. Yeah, indeed. Thank you, guys.